everybody. Thanks for the nice introduction. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to speak mainly about Migrant Journal. But first of all, I'm Christoph. As uh, he already said, I'm 50% of Offshore Studio. And the other 50% come from Isabel. Um, she's originally from Germany. I'm from Austria. We've met in Zurich, where we've both studied at the uh, University of the, of, uh, of the Arts. And well, from there on, after graduating, we kind of went into different directions. Isabel went to Germany to work on freelance and self-initiated projects. I went to Italy for a year. But it, back in 2015, I think it was, we kind of ended up again in Zurich and met up for some coffees and I kind of rediscovered that we have a similar interests in, in how we approach design. So we, we kind of discovered that we, want, we don't want to only work on you know, commercial commissions. We also want to do self-initiated projects. We also want to do publishing projects. We are really interested in um, typography, storytelling, editorial design, this kind of things. And we also want to do research. And that means like research on an intellectual level, maybe, uh, like politics, economics, social stuff, uh, but also on a, on a visual level. So we really want to experiment with how to create images, uh, with what methods we can create images, how can we come up with new kinds of images. So these are the kind of spheres uh, that we are kind of using and moving through when we are doing projects. And sometimes they merge. Uh, sometimes we put, we're putting more emphasis on one aspect or one, on one sphere. And I mean, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of, sometimes it, it changes from day to day or even from hour to hour. So, you know, sometimes the self-initiated aspect is bigger and then suddenly it's the publishing aspect of our work. And we are, we are so, through the last two and a half years, we've worked for mainly cultural clients, collaborated with them, worked for them, worked with them, and created very much different stuff like uh, identities, websites, publications, et cetera, et cetera. So this was just a brief introduction to our studio, what we do, and maybe what our kind of philosophy is. But now I want to talk about the long, long, long-term project that started in 2015 and will continue until, I think, the end of 2019. Um, it's Migrant Journal. We've started it, like I said, two and a half years ago uh, during the height of the migrant crisis, where a lot of people from S Syria were moving to Europe under like, devastating humanitarian conditions. And we were really irritated by the kind of discourse and um, discussions that were around. And we thought they were really polemic and one-dimensional. And, we felt that there was really a lack or, yeah, there was a missing voice in a way for a more in-depth conversation uh, that, that's more true to the complexity of the whole theme. So we came up with the idea of creating this publication project that we called Migrant, where we wanted to kind of reappropriate or also rethink the term migration and migrant. We don't want, want it to see it narrowed down on, um, you know, the refugee. We really wanted to show that migration is something that, of course, has something to do with the movement of people, but also a lot to do with the movement of you know, goods, information, money, even plants and landscapes. And <clears throat> it's so much about how all these different aspects interconnect with each other. So that's the idea for Migrant Journal. And every issue, so it comes out every half a year, that was the idea. It's limited to six issues. And every issue is focusing on one aspect of this huge theme. So for example, the first one that came out in, when was it? 2016, fall, uh, called Across Country, focused on the countryside as a space of migration. So for example, we talked about uh, migrants from South America moving on trains through uh, Guatemala and Mexico to the US. We talked about um, changing borders or shifting borders through climate change because they are defined through the watershed of glaciers and because they are, they are melting, the borders are shifting. Uh, in the second issue, Wild Capital, we, we, we are talking about um, the movement of information, uh, the movement of money and the movement of resources like marble um, or gold. Uh, in the third issue, Flowing Grounds, it's all about the spaces of the sky and the sea 
as spaces of migration. So we are looking at you know how do whales move through the sea? How do drains? Um, sorry, how do um, drones move in the sky? How do um, how do actually sea nomads live between Malaysia and Indonesia? And the last issue, the fourth one, that it will be released this Thursday in New York. Actually, it just came from the printer or. It should have come from the printer, but it didn't arrive on time. Anyway, that's another story. Um, that's the fourth issue. It's called Dark Matters, and it's all about the invisible and the illegal uh, aspects of migration. So it's about you know, human trafficking, smuggling of goods, drugs, etc. And I will talk about that a bit in more in depth later. So you know, now, now I'm saying all the time, we, 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 and we is not only Isabel and me. We. Uh, was in the beginning uh, Justinia and Katerina, Isabel and me. Justinia is uh, a, an urbanist and writer from Paris uh, who lives in London. Katerina is a Portuguese architect who uh, lived in London as well, moved to Bergen. She's not part of the project anymore, but two other editors, Damasa and Michaela, are part of our team now. And basically what I want, want to say and show with this map is that we are all over the place. Uh, nobody lives in the country where he or she holds a passport from. And I think migration, you know, is pretty much a, a part, a strong part of our own biographies. And that's also an interesting aspect for our project. So when we started this project in 2015, uh, what we really wanted to do and challenge is um, we wanted to reconsider the relationship uh, and the balance between editor editorial and design processes. So we really wanted to kind of that's a hard word, but destroy that kind of separation between these spheres. Because often when you look at magazines, there's the editorial part and there's the design part. And you know, the editorial part provides text and then it goes to the graphic designers, they do the layout and maybe some image editors provide some images, etc. And we thought, uh, in terms of storytelling and intensity of the stories we want to provide, maybe that's not the best way to move forward. So we really thought that we want to um, communicate a lot with each other and we want to have a kind of process where the design informs the editorial decisions and the other way around. So, And one consequence of this was that Isabel and me were involved from the very beginning on into the making of this journal and what we saw there was we had this call for contributions, you know, we asked people to contribute over Twitter and other social media channels also from our uh, different backgrounds and what we saw there is that the, the content was so heterogeneous it was so different like there were you know journalistic reportages there were essays there were scientific texts and then there were I don't even want to talk about the image material that was like high res like one gigabyte super photographs and then there were like super low res shitty photographs and then there were maps and infographics and just raw data where we could just do something with it. So, so it was really, really heterogeneous. And of course, our challenge as a designer was to create something that's coherent and that's strong as a series. So what we did is we came up with this idea of using um, aspects of an atlas as a, as a kind of main concept for the journal. So we really liked that idea because, you know, an atlas there, it's all about territory, it's all about space, how is it structured, how how do people, how do goods move through the space? And uh, so we use that um, as a basis. Uh, so for example, in the, on the inside cover of the magazine, you see this uh, map of UN macro regions where all of our articles are kind of located. So you see where they are. Uh, also in the like a small sub navigation there, it always says where you are. Um, of course, we also did a like, huge in-depth research looking at maps and infographics for months, which was really nice, like uh, beautiful maps of the sky, beautiful maps of the sea and of the of, you know, different layers of soil. We looked at everything, I think. And in order to come up with an aesthetic and style for the infographics we wanted to use, uh, basically how, how the whole thing works is um, when you have the magazine, there are 12 to 13 articles. and around half of it are um, accompanied by these infographics. And it's not also a stylistic and aesthetic thing, it's also much uh, about uh, editorial choices there, and it's also much about 
maybe um, providing different points of entry for the reader because you know sometimes texts can be very long, very dry, very dry or scientific. Sometimes it's hard to access them, and then it's just nice to have a visual entry point for the reader. And also, which is uh, another aspect that is great. Sometimes we want to emphasize uh, aspects of a topic that are not really emphasized in the text, and then we use infographics in order to to show them, to visualize them. And most of the infographics Isabel and I research ourselves, so this is kind of our contribution as well to the, to the journal, you could say. And another thing that's very important for the coherency of the whole project is the, as a custom typeface we've created. Uh, it's called Migrant Grotesque. Uh, and actually, we are, you know, we are not trained type designers, and sometimes that's a bit tricky, especially psychologically in Switzerland, where everything is like super perfect when it comes to type design, super smooth. And I mean, this is this is our like second font that we did, and it has some flaws in it, but we try to improve it with every issue, so it becomes better and better, I would say. And it it has its own migration history in a way, which is nice as well. And we use it, we use it for the magazine, we use it to start articles together with a metallic spot color that reflects the theme. So for example, this is a cross country, so we pick this bronze, uh, shiny metallic bronze that kind of references uh, so the color of soil. And we create it, uh, we, we use it to create some structure throughout the magazine. So the spot color and the typography are re really much uh, the core of the identity of the project, I would say. And then, you know, it's not only about design elements in order to keep the whole thing together, it's also about editorial elements. So for example, in the beginning, we always have the editorial letter um, that talks about the issue, how we frame it, why, why it's important to us. And we always do this kind of abstract um, illustrations for it. So, and the idea behind it is to set a mood or create an atmosphere that kind of soaks you in as a reader of the, of the journal and, and sets the right tone for the articles that follow. Another, another um, constant element that we have is a, a photo story uh, where we use only photo photographs with captions. And for the last issue, Dark Matters, or the cur current one, I should say, we have this great uh, photo story from Javier Coazo who um, documented uh, petrol smuggling between Nigeria and, and Benin. And actually that's a really fascinating and interesting story because in Benin you have only like six uh, gas stations which are run by the state and only two of them work. And there the were two where you can buy petrol. The petrol is super expensive. So what people do or started to do like not only a couple, but dec almost decades ago, uh, is going to Nigeria, getting uh, petrol from there and smuggling it back to uh, Benin. And they are doing it on these motorbikes, uh, and they have these bottles around their body. And of course, that's super dangerous, and sometimes there are you know, flames, and sometimes stuff explodes and people die. So yeah, the reportage is really um, focusing on how they get the petrol from, from Nigeria to Benin and under what circumstances and actually yeah what like also what economic and political um, situations lead to that and also what's maybe interesting after the first two issues where we had to define a lot of you know layout stuff grid stuff refine the typeface uh, that was almost like more 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 set i would say after two issues and from the third issue on we could start to concentrate a bit more on playing around with imagery, playing around with illustrations. Uh, so for example, these are spreads from the third issue. Uh, what you see on the left top corner uh, is an illustration by Derek Ecolano, uh, who illustrated a story about, um, about migration in the Mediterranean Sea of humans, but also of jellyfish. Um, so we collaborate with illustrators, but sometimes we also like on the uh, top right corner, we just set up a little photo studio in our uh, small studio and photograph a coconut for a story which is about coconut migration. Or we uh, play around with 3D programs, for example, like this one in the uh, bottom right corner, which is about, for an article, which is about um, infrastructures on the sea. 
or we collaborate with photographers who do more artistic things like this one on the left, which is actually, these are, this is an article about um, ice as a territory and how boundaries are defined in the Arctic, which is like geopolitical challenging because you know, ice is melting because of climate change, so the borders are changing as well. Uh, and we thought these images show beautifully what's actually going on there through like melting this ice layer with um, the water. And they come from an Icelandic photographer who does photo tours for tourists who want to photograph northern lights and this kind of stuff. And he's just a, photo, a hobby photographer and in his spare time. Uh, he's, he's doing this kind of stuff, uh, beautiful stuff. And last but not least, um, the um, magazine is also, it's, you know, it's not only a flat object for us, it's, it's not only a graphic object, it's also, it has also a materiality, it, it's also a tactile thing. So we also play around with textures. We, we have a kind of system where we use different embossings for the cover. We always embed the metallic spot color in the images as well. And I mean, we all do this, and I think that's the last thing I want to say because I'm over time already. Um, we all do this to kind of intensify the, the reading experience. And you know, we, th we think and believe that an in-depth read is not only an intellectual in-depth read, but also something that you kind of experience in depth on a, on a tactile level, on a visual level, and so on and so on. So we, we really hope that uh, these this six issues become kind of an archive, I would say, that reflect the, the current decade, uh, decade of, of migration. And maybe in 10 or 20 years, people pick it up in libraries and, and use it to reflect uh, about the challenges we had um, in this decade. Thank you.